Welcome to the Billy Ho Forecast Show. Please subscribe and like the video. Remember, the more you share, the bigger we grow. Now, let's go! Billy Ho here coming at you with another 2022 fantasy football low key video. Today we're going to talk about running backs and I'm going to do something slightly different since I called it low key. I'm going to say that maybe we can find a couple of guys in the mid rounds that might help your team. Say you've got wide receivers early or you like the zero RB approach. Or maybe you just do, you get your first stud and you're looking for that number two or number three guy in the mid rounds. Now, I'm not seeing a ton of dudes, so you might want to go ahead and secure those running backs earlier than normal. Because to me, I mean, I, maybe I'm just not quite as in depth or in the know, but a lot of these names down there past 20 to third RB30 or RB35, they're just really, really not you know, tickling my uh, fancy there. So I say be sure to stick around for first thing because I will have some low down and dirty RB sleepers toward the end. And I'm not doing a lot of sleepers. I probably got six or seven to eight. So, uh, but they will mostly have fancy appeal anyway. But if the injury bug breaks the, wor breaks the right way, then they might have big upside. So I'm treating this video like I do all the other videos, 10 or 12 man snake draft, possibly 16 team league, uh, some best ball uh, in it a little bit, but they're not ranked in any order. Uh, I'm going to probably start with a few guys you already know. These guys might either be sleepers or low key. Let's find out. First guy on the list, you already know, A.J. Dillon. Not, snoot, uh, not super sneaky to start the season, but in your home league, people are going to want to take Aaron Jones possibly in the early in the second round or whatever because uh, he's the de facto starter and he's the biggest upside big play guy. And uh, they see their eyes light up when they see his stats when Devontae Adams wasn't on the field. So – in good reason. I'm not saying Jones is a bad pick, but I would not be too keen on, say, RB1, like he's my second pick if I'm at the turn at 12 and I got, you know, uh, maybe I get a uh, Justin Jefferson if I'm lucky and then I get Aaron Jones. That sounds pretty good. I, I, I wouldn't argue too bad against that, but I might look elsewhere. Because I like Dylan – to go in about the sixth round, maybe fifth, I want to say as high as seventh, especially in home leagues. So he's already going to get decent work to start with. He's going to get goal line work, and he has been working on his uh, receiving skills. And uh, he's going to likely, Aaron Rodgers already said, both backs could catch 50 passes. So if he can get some goal, down, goal line work in there, and say the injury bug swings his way and Jones misses two, three games right in the middle of the season, then you're you're got a bona fide number one stud for, you know, maybe a cover and a guy in a bye week, and you don't even miss uh, a stud like Taylor. You could just plug in Dylan and you're good to go. So you never know. Jones has been durable, but you know, like I said, injuries can happen to anybody, but really. When has Jones ever won anybody a fantasy football league? Maybe this year will be different, but going that high, I just don't know. Okay, second guy on the list. <laughs> oh, Lord, I know. I drafted him two years ago thinking he was going to be something. Miles Sanders. All of the talent, none of the work. For some reason, the Eagles like to play a half dozen different running backs, which is a bit of an exaggeration. But they do run that three-man rotation, and they will have Kenneth Gainwell, and they will have Boston Scott. So they might even have another guy that they get off free agency. Who the hell knows? But it's just how it goes. But now, 
if Miles Sanders will be the de facto number one back, and he is probably the back with the most upside. So if he's falling into maybe the sixth round, late, mid, early seven, and say it breaks that way and player, you know, a particular position goes on a run, and then you see everybody's got to take wide receivers in this round, and then all of a sudden, boom, he's sitting there at 7.05, then you got yourself a great upside pick, especially in best ball. Because he, you know, he 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 would probably sink your lineup if you went too her, early on him and relied on him as a starter in your home league week to week. You're sitting there going, God, nine carries, 37 yards. Oh, he's got 12 fantasy points, you know. And then you you bench him after week three, and then he has a 70 yard touchdown run, and then three other carries and two catches, and the next thing you know, he's got 179 total yards and and two touchdowns. And then you're, you're, you know, you're pulling yourself back off that ledge, my friend. So he does, like I said, have some good upside in best ball. And, uh, but I wouldn't rely on him too much as a starter. Uh, and now he is actually dealing with some minor injury right now. Uh, not too specific, but probably soft tissue. So he might fall even further in drafts. So maybe he can fall to late seven. So he's a fine flex option. A uh, nice RB3, maybe you won't have to start him and you can stash him if you've got the roster space. So that's the second, and I call I guess, it low-key. But they're, they're middle-round guys, and another middle-round guy I'm going to give you is Rashad Penny. I almost went with that Kenneth Walker fellow, but then I saw he's injured right now. He's got a hernia, so he's dealing with that. And uh, so that's going to be tough. That basically clears the way for Penny to get the work to start the season, which is why I bump Penny up. The Hawks are going to take a step back this year, as everybody's pretty sure without Russell Wilson. But if Locke is any good at all, I mean, you still got Lockett, you still got Metcalf, and you still got a decent offensive line and a good play-calling offense. So maybe Penny could fall to the sixth, seventh round. If you can get him there, he's a steal. You saw what he did toward the end of last season, ripping off 100-yard games and touchdowns. He is a good athlete, and I think maybe he finally was healthy. And uh, so we'll see what happens with old Penny. Little Penny from science class, right? All right, now we're getting in a little, little bit more on the low key. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson from New England. Uh, but – Ramondre Ramon Stevenson, big power back, fits that Belichick mold, six foot three, I mean, six foot, 230 pounds. He has at least 15 pounds on Damian Harris. Neither back catches a lot of pass, but you saw Damian Harris. He was kind of viable at DraftKings last year just because of the touchdown upside and the 100 yard games. So I think Ramon, Ramondre can get there. Uh, I'm going to just say Stevenson because Ramondre is making me pause too much. But viable on DraftKings, Stevenson ain't that type of work, but he can get that on occasion. So he's worked hard in the offseason on his route running skills because he wants that third down back roll if he's backing up Harris. So if he can figure out how to catch passes, you can see him in on third downs, and then you got all of a sudden you might get that injury bug and then, boom, you got yourself a bona fide player in the, in the late, late rounds. So uh, I, I kind of like him. He showed some uh, promise. He rated out really well according to a lot of metrics at the end of last year, like those last six games. Okay, I got a bit of a splitter on you. And uh, what we got here is uh, the Miami running backs. And uh, I, I was beginning to say Chase Edmonds. But then I got looking into Raheem Mostert more, and I said, man, I'm kind of up in the air on this one, and maybe I'll just toss it to the people and uh, make a case, sort of a little case for each one, and you all can decide for yourselves. Do you want to go early on Edmonds or wait a little bit and get Mostert? So Edmonds, number one on the depth chart, and the one they gave the most money to. Speedy, pass-catching, PPR monster. Could shine even with limited workload. 
uh, with Edmonds, you don't want that heavy workload because he showed at Arizona that he just can't handle the bell cow type of role. He's too small. He's too injury prone. So soft tissue and whatnot. So I like how they're going to split it between him and Mostert anyway. Uh, Tua is kind of that check down type. You know, he's got Waddle and Tyreek Hill out there in the flat or whatnot. And say they send Tyreek deep and, you know, and Waddle's unavailable, it's check down time, baby. So I can see Monster catching a few passes too, but he wasn't really that type of back at San Francisco. So I say five to seven targets a game, 10 to 12 carries. If he can get you four catches, 50, 60 yards, you're already on your way for a viable RB2. And then you got the big playability. So that's case one for him. Now, Monster, you could probably get five rounds later to start case number two. And my case for Monster is that new coach Mike McDaniels is a Shanahan tree guy. And Monster did well. It was a good fit in the, scan, the Shanahan zone run scheme. He also has the big playability, and he, you know, he can break off long TDs. He got hurt last year in the first game of the season, was never really much of a factor. Uh, but he's definitely a good best ball type player. And the downside is he doesn't get a lot of targets, but he may get some. And also, he's going to be battling with Sony Michelle for playing time as well. So we'll have to deal with that. And you might likely need an injury to Edmonds to reap big rewards from Monster. So getting down toward the end, and we got. I guess this is going to be the last guy. Like I said, I just didn't have a whole lot of running backs, and I just thought I'd toss out a few. But I came across this guy, Kansas City, and you probably heard the name because of the touts or started to talk this guy up. But damn, his metrics look good. Isaiah Pacheco, Kansas City. Rookie running back is interesting. He's 5'10", 216 pounds. He ran a sub 4'4", 4, 4, he had an off-the-chart speed score, and what I liked is that dude ripped off 27 reps on the bench. That's 225, 27 times. Most guys just give up after, you know, they've proven that they're strong. But this dude ripped off 27 reps on the bench. Hashtag, what's your bench? And, uh, of course, you know, CEH, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, uh, to me, doesn't have the size, doesn't have the – durability to be an every down back McKinnon is another smallish guy that can play limited snaps with some upsides to spell but I like 5 10 2 16 looks pretty prototypical and if this dude catches on quick and we all know what's the position that rookies can impact the most in in year one running back so let's get her done with Tyreek Hill gone that may give this guy a few more of those short goal line carries maybe end arounds to beat the defense to the corner, but he might be just a free agent target. He, he probably will go undrafted. So just keep an eye on that in your home leagues. He'll probably be a best ball darling in the last couple of picks and in, in those uh, drafts as well. So that's going to do it for this low key hashtag sleepers, hashtag Billy Ho sports. Thank you for watching. I hope you're getting something out of these videos because I'm just getting the practice in. I'm getting better and better at delivery and all my editing and all that kind of good stuff. I do it all myself. I don't have an editor. Billy Ho's the editor. Billy Ho's the writer. Billy Ho's the director. Cut now. All right. So that's going to, I guess, cut our video. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Holla holla at your boy. Leave a comment. Let me know who some of your, if I miss somebody, say, dude. I can't believe you didn't you didn't have what's his name. You know, I mean that Atlanta running back, he's tight. What about that rookie from Houston? So, you know, there's some guys out there I left off the list. Let me know. Holla holla. Till the next video. Peace.